jewelry designer, so it's about time I talk about some jewelry. I'm going to start with June's Jewel of the Month, which is my Queen of Scots snake ring, which is looking lovely right here, in 18 karat yellow gold with diamond accents. I finished this piece earlier this year. I've been wanting to do it for a really long time. One of my earliest pieces was a Queen of Scots inspired necklace. You might not associate a Scottish queen with snakes, but the reason that I was inspired to do snake jewelry for Mary is that in the 1500s, Mary was imprisoned by her own cousin, Elizabeth I of England. There were people in England who preferred that Mary would be queen, so that wasn't really good for Elizabeth. Elizabeth's advisors wanted her to get rid of her cousin Mary, calling her a bosom serpent, meaning a snake that you keep really close to you. And that's why my first Mary Queen of Scots piece was a serpent necklace. My second Mary piece, and this was quite a few years ago now, was the earrings to go with the necklace. I always meant to do a matching snake ring, but somehow I just didn't get around to it. There's been a lot of other designs to make. And then, I guess, late last year, I just got inspired. Um, a lot of my friends who collect antique jewelry were wearing a lot of Victorian snake rings. And I thought, oh, I have a great snake design. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. I'm just going to do one of these simple little tiny snake rings like everyone is wearing. And of course I had to do it my way though, and it became this giant, heavy, awesome snake ring. So um, it was inspired by Mary, then it was kind of inspired by my friends, and it turned out differently than I expected, but I'm very happy with it. It's one of my favorite pieces recently. Of course, Mary's cousin, Elizabeth I, who I mentioned before, is one of the most famous queens of all time. And by the way, she did, of course, execute her cousin Mary. She didn't really want to. She, um, her own mother, Anne Boleyn, had been executed, beheaded by her father, who was Henry VIII. And that kind of gave Elizabeth a bad feeling. So she didn't really want to do it, and the advisors kept pushing her to do it, and she was like, I don't know. And then one day she's like, oh, bring in my papers, I'm just going to sign, you know, my usual paperwork, whatever I have to sign this morning. And she just kind of signed it while she wasn't really looking at it, and they had put in the paper for execution there, so she signed off on the execution order. But she knew it, and they knew it, but she got to pretend she didn't know it, and they did behead Mary. And when she found out about it, she got to say, oh, I didn't know you guys were doing that. But uh, so that was her way of, of handling that situation. And did I do jewelry in honor of Elizabeth I? Of course. This necklace was one of my first queen pieces. It's two and a half inches wide, two carats of diamonds. I got it out of the safe just to show you guys. Um, this is one of my signature pieces and it's called Gloriana, which is actually a way that a poet, Ed Edmund Spencer, referred to Elizabeth I. Elizabeth is definitely one of my favorite royal ladies. Um, now I'm kind of thinking a bracelet, I don't know, we'll see. It might be the jewel of the month in one of my upcoming videos. Click the link below this video to see previous posts I've done on Mary and Elizabeth I. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next week's video.